So you, I'm going to share with you the basic process of onboarding and offboarding your team. It's pretty straightforward now. Onboarding is very simple. You create the user, you add the user to the group. It's pretty much all you need to do. Then you give them their username and password and they need to go and sign in. We're going to jump into our admin panel here. All right, so we've got our users here. Adding a new user, super straightforward. I may as well show you guys that you can actually add someone to a group from their user account. So let me open up that Test Genies account that we had there and show you what that looks like. There we go, okay. So once you've got a user open, you can actually add them to groups. There we go on the left-hand side, add to groups. Here we go, and you just search for groups. So maybe I wanna add them to like test exec add, done. Okay, there we go. Member of two groups, that's your onboarding done. Offboarding is a little bit different. There's a number of steps to offboard. Number one is to suspend the user. Number two is to archive the data. Number three is to delete the account. Number four is to redirect. So we have our user here. They've just finished up their last day. We're going to click the suspend button in their user account. Now that is gonna keep their account active. It keeps billing for a license for this. So you only wanna do this temporarily but you do definitely wanna do it immediately on their last day so they can no longer access the account. Now, step two is to migrate their data. For us, this is normally a two-step process. For you, you can do it in one step if you wish. So you would have seen there where I went to delete the user previously. I can click to migrate this user's existing email and that's gonna give me the data migration wizard and I can go through the data migration wizard. I choose the source account. I choose the place that it's going to. Step three is to actually delete the user. And so in step three, we're going to select to transfer their data. I would include these boxes as well. Basically it's saying, do you wanna move stuff that is not shared with anyone else that was only owned by this user? And I say yes, because I want absolutely everything that's in that person's account. I'm gonna to have to select the archive user, of course, and then I'm gonna click delete user. All right, so that's on its way. Now, the last step in this, the last step in this, all right. So it's in the process of being moved, it's currently suspended, and then once that uh, data migration's done, it's gonna reactivate them. But once this user has been deleted, that email address, test at itgenius.com, and let's say it's bob at itgenius.com, right? Well, bob at itgenius.com may still be used by some of your staff. And so what I would recommend is that user's been deleted, but you go back to your main users for the company and maybe you go to your help desk email or your sales email or one of your shared mailboxes that you've probably delegated and shared with multiple people. So for us, it might be hello at itgenius.com. And then you add this as an additional email. So where is it? We're gonna to go to additional emails. These are called alias emails. And we're gonna add Bob oops, bob at itgenius.com as an alternative email to your main sales account. And what that means is that no emails disappear into cyberspace for that person. For you to have an auto response, you would need to have that set up in a mailbox somewhere. So if you wanted to get really clever, I mean, you've got two options here. If you've got a staff member that's left the business, Option number one is you say, hey, you know what? We'd really like to capture all of those emails and have the sales team process them or have our customer service team process them, right? So you'd redirect that person's email into one of those new accounts. But let's draw it out. So test at, and then maybe you have, you know, sales at, right? So what I'm suggesting here is that you've got someone who's left the company and if you just wanna capture all of their emails, we're creating an alias, which is free, alias of test at for sales at. So they basically automatically show up. And that's what I've set up on this screen here is we've set up the aliases. But if you say, hey, you know what? We don't really care about customers emailing. We just wanna make sure that they get an auto response if they email that email address that that person's no longer at the company anymore and it's no longer active. And we don't actually need to read the emails. We don't want anyone to, you know, to go and read them. We just wanna make sure there's a auto response. And what we would do there is maybe you would set it to the, uh, the archive that we set up. Remember that archive with all the users, you would make that 
an alias of archive instead. And then you'd set up the auto response here on that archive account. So you'd sign into the archive account and you'd just set a generic auto response from the archive account that anytime someone emailed it, it would go back and say, hey, you've emailed a user that's no longer in our company. We're not gonna read this email. Here's how you contact us. Personally, I probably wouldn't do that. I'd probably prefer to put the user's email, sales mailbox or customer service so your team can pick it up. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius. Or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.